In all seriousness, let's. I do want to, in, in, in an actual segue to what we want to talk about today, um, some righteous criticism was was posted on the video I clipped for a uh, discussion of my recent visit with Mike Tyson. And uh, uh, in all seriousness, though, I think the, 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 that is the, I did learn that this week about the modern economy, all jokes aside, the, the, you know, how it works. And I was under the misconception that you do get a discount if you buy, but they were like, nah, we want you to go into debt. We need you to get that interest. We need that extra 15, 20, whatever you pay over 60 months. I was like, that's deep anyway. So no Lambo. But this criticism here is very different. Let me make it a little bit bigger here. Um, so I mentioned, I, you know, in, in our discussion with, with Dr. Burroughs the other day, I shared the story of my VIP visit with, with, with Mike Tyson that had been teased previously on last week's Earn Your Liberation. And um, I shared how without being able to share, get into too many details, how part of, I admit it, a good portion of my wanting to do it was just curiosity, intrigue at meeting the legend that had been, you know, born, you know, that, that I would, literally grew up being enamored by, right? But the other portion, the other impetus to actually get me to leave my house, which is ultimately very difficult for me to do, and to go out and to to go through everything, to actually have that brief meeting with Mike and then to talk with his 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 staff or his assistants was for a legit project uh, for his his beyond his celebrity, his story situates him perfectly for my colleagues project. Uh, and work and actually addresses in many ways what this comment is raising as a very legit criticism. Um, now, I can't at this point divulge much more about the project because it's not mine and it hasn't gotten to a point where, from my vantage point, it can't just be stolen or interrupted or distorted or interfered with. So, you know, I and I, you know, so we're not there yet, but. It involves addressing not only what we're talking about today in terms of colonialism and mental disorders, but new methodologies for addressing trauma in African communities. And by African, I mean in, in the most soda of senses that Black America included, that this is an, a, a diaspora con issue being addressed by diaspora Africans in a very radically pan-African, African-centered way. So, and, and in terms of psychology, so the, the specific criticism comes from uh, CYNV 1491. How are you and others working on this project contending with Tyson's history of violence against women? Genuine question, because I think it's a huge contradiction. And since you're sharing this, maybe there should, be, should also be some transparency about that as well, since the information is out there about his past abuse. Do y'all believe he's changed and that's why you decided to move forward with a potential partnership? Do y'all believe this is not a contradiction and something that can be put aside for the project and whatever good can come from the project? Regardless, the reasoning, maybe y'all can let us know, can let us in on how y'all are contending with this because it seems like, generally speaking, not BPM specific, addressing violence against women is always treated as something that derails the progress or convo rather than something that also needs to be taken seriously for the sake of everyone in any movement or project, not just those who bear the brunt of patriarchal violence. Someone else at Bo Bosque Score 777 adds, this is something that needs to be addressed. I brought it up in the live and everyone ignored it and continued making jokes and talking about how great a boxer he was. I was very surprised at the segment and the reaction to it. Very strange considering this channel, how this channel normally talks about violence against women inside and outside the movement, dedicating panels to violence against women inside not of leftist orgs and having people on who defend NOI in Philly beating up guys who, and having people on who defend NOI in Philly beating up guys who abuse women and then bragging about meeting and trying to work with Mike Tyson has me scratching my... Who... I don't, I don't know what this part is in reference to. Who's, who's, 
who had people on defending the NOI in Philly beating up guys who abused women and then bragging about, okay, I see, uh, well, I don't know who this was in reference to, but I get the point. All valid points and concerns from Daphne Brown, 8863. Um, those are legit questions. Um, so, now I did mention in the segment what I'll say again here, that part of what we were looking to get in contact with Tyson for was to, to address the relationship between sports, psychology, and trauma, and how involved and part of it is meant to involve how Tyson has himself continued to work in response to having suffered his own trauma. So as the the question, the comment is, is made there about what is apparently well known in terms of Tyson's abuse of women, I'm not so sure it's as well known or focused on uh, the abuse he suffered as a young boy and man, this is not to justify anything, but to explain the context for the, some of the context for the attempt to engage him is that he, he has publicly talked some about his constant work to overcome his own very traumatic experiences, as particularly as a young boy. Um, and has been very public about how that has impacted his abuse of women and others. So, so as I wrote, I just made my own note here, aside from my own admitted contradictions in terms of admiring him, and I did mention that in the initial video, and I'll say it again here, I acknowledge it's a contradiction. I mean, I it's a whole bunch of contradictions. Um, my relationship, you know, the, the relationship of celebrity, the, the, my curiosity about meeting somebody who I was very much impressed by in terms of what he could do in the ring and out of the ring. Um, what's his name? Mitch, what's his name? <laughs> Walked up on him in a barber shop. Remember that story? My goodness. You know, stuff like that. Um, I admit that contradiction. Um, but as I also made a note here, if to my understanding, he is not actively engaged in any abuse and active hostility against African people and is engaged actively in trying to reform and get better and recover from his own experience with colonial colonialism and trauma, then I do think we have to incorporate efforts to care and efforts to care. And that is the nature of the project to which he is being invited that I am not involved with directly and am not in charge of and am not at this point capable or allowed to or yeah even able to explain more about so but I did so anyway that's my own reasoning that that I don't think celebrity or not I don't think men who have engaged in violence against women who are currently actively not doing that and trying to correct that behavior, I don't think they should be disengaged. And I don't think that efforts to address from the context, particularly of uh, uh, African-centered counseling psychology, they should not be ignored when it comes to efforts and projects around healing from trauma and anyway, so. But so that's anyway, that's the best I have. Oh, wait, there was one other thing I wanted to share in, in, as it regards. And so I, I can share at least this. This is a, a title of a, of a, a, a paper I was a, a part of producing uh, over a decade ago that is the uh, does form part of the framework for how all of this is being addressed. And it does perfectly dovetail with what we're talking about today, because the paper is Beyond Health Disparities, Examining Power Disparities in Industrial Complexes from the Views of Franz Fanon. And part of what we, in the collective of us who, who put this together, we're looking to do is trying to put together a more holistic, so to speak, approach to what was the ultimate purpose of the paper, 
addressing the psychological conditions of African people who show up in the the uh, counseling centers and and offices of uh, the people uh, you know some of my colleagues are you know working with and in uh, and colonialism and trauma is part of it. So it is, again, not to say, it, again, it's not to not acknowledge my own contradictions, it's not to not acknowledge the patriarchy and the violence, and it's not to, um, yeah, but it is to acknowledge that the specific response to trauma in a colonial setting was part of the reason for that engagement, so. 